If, if the statute of limitations has already passed, how has he even been indicted? Well, you can, uh, as, as uh, lawyers in uh, the U.S. have said for a long time, a prosecutor can indict a ham sandwich if he wants to. Uh, the prosecutor only presents one side of the case. And here you have a very partisan political Democrat partisan who is pursuing this case, only presented about half the case. You had one of the advisors to Michael Cohen, who's going to be one of their star witnesses, bring documents to the jur grand jury that they had never seen before. So he's able to move it forward because he promised his supporters when he was running for this prosecutor post that he would go after Trump. So this is just fulfilling a campaign promise rather than uh, actually, I think, having a, a valid case. In fact, this particular DA had at one point decided he was not going to indict President Trump, but then felt political pressure at home from his voters to do so. I take it that we're not likely to see Trump in jail, which is presumably what the Democrats were hoping for. No, and, and I think that this is the weakest of the cases that are being processed against him. You've got a claim that he mishandled documents that were stored at Mar-a-Lago. You have a claim in Georgia, the, the state where there was such a close contest, where Trump called the secretary of state of that state and encouraged them to, to find every vote that might be missing. That's alleged interference. Those cases are still weak, but this is by far the weakest one that they have. But again, what they were wanting is the big banner headlines, Trump indicted. They wanted the mugshot that they're going to get. But, but that's not really going to hurt Trump in the Republican primary. Now, he may not do as well in, in the general election because he still has problems with uh, independent voters, women voters, young voters. But this is mobilizing a lot of people who were really not big fans of Trump to say, look, this is so outrageous. It's so out of bounds that you have to support him if you support the American justice system, because this is, is really weaponizing the justice system against one person unfairly. And I think that's going to move some voters to his support. I think we're seeing that from some of the Republican opposition as well, where they recognize this is so wrong. This is such a threat to our entire justice system that you really have to back him rather than than the outrageous move that the Democrats are pulling at this point. So this almost guarantees him the ticket, does it? I think it guarantees him the Republican nomination. Again, you'll still have a battle. If Joe Biden is the nominee, uh, you'll see them going head to head and uh, one of the big differences this time is that the Trump team is focused on what they call ballot harvesting, where you go out, gal gather ballots, then deliver them in mass to the to the ballot boxes. The Democrats have done that the last couple of cycles. Republicans have felt like this really wasn't a good idea. This wasn't good politics. Uh, but they've decided, OK, fine, if that's the rules of the game, we're going to play it better and we're going to go find our voters at gun shows and churches and and conservative gatherings. We're going to ballot harvest and we're going to beat them at their own game. And I think that's the Trump focus in the general election. We'll see in uh, a little over a year and a half whether that works.